So we saw uh, some movie, and then uh, afterwards it was raining, and it, like it never hardly ever rains in LA. So I was mm. I was kind of like oh, I don't want to go back to my place, even though my place is pretty close to Arclight. And um, anyway, I went to my parents' house, and then I got a call <clears throat> at like three in the morning that somebody had like died at my house, and it was the weirdest thing ever because they had like caution tape up, and you know like. It was right in my front yard, and basically, I guess a guy came, and he was, like, burying things in my backyard for, like, three days. And um, <clears throat> he buried a lunchbox with, like, a milk chocolate inside of it in my backyard. And then he buried, like, knives and, like, a rope and, like, a bunch of random stuff. And I guess he'd been in my backyard, like, hanging out there and, like, burying things. Why I didn't notice, I don't know. <laughs> and <clears throat> I'm just, like, apparently not very observant. And then... um I found out later that, like, all that stuff was there and that he had been, like, pacing in my backyard with a gun. He also looked, like, crazy. Like, he was wearing, like, this long trench coat and he had, like, a... Like... Still dressed better than your date in the zebra <laughs> pants. Yeah, he was dressed, <laughs> he was dressed pretty, nice, uh... pretty nicely. Um, but, yeah, he was just, like, pacing in my backyard, I guess. And because uh, I have, like, security cameras. So later when we looked, I, we figured out he was back there for, like like, six hours or something, like, waiting. And then somebody drove up that had a similar car. Like, that kind of looked like my car. And I guess he th got confused and he thought that maybe it was me driving up. It's just, like, bad luck. And he, like, shot at this person, like, six times. And he missed because she was in a car. She drove away. And then he set himself on fire and he shot himself simultaneously. And then later, so I got a call at, like, 3 or 4 in the morning. This happened probably at, like, 1 in the morning. I got a call at, like, 3 or 4 in the morning saying, like, where are you? Like, can you come, like, to your house because someone, like, killed themselves there and they were trying to just like put it all together and they still haven't really put like put it all together why it happened or like what the person was doing or if mm -hmm. he it might have just been totally random like he saw me somewhere and he like followed me home and then or something like that but anyway they never figured out like exactly exactly why so um but yeah so it freaked me out really bad and I started staying like back at my parents house and then I got another house somewhere else because I Felt like it was. Should we share weird. the address? <laughs> yeah, I should probably tell the address to that house. I mean, are you, what? <laughs> like, are you? The do you need some Lunesta? Like, do you need sleeping pills? I have some. <laughs> like, the only thing I know to say to you is like, I have sleeping pills. If Ambien, if, like, <laughs> Ambien. How do you cope with something like that? It was really like just bizarre, but I kind of do. Like, I have like a fantasy of like diving into the story and like figuring out like exactly why it all like happened just because I think it'd be interesting to know like who the person was and like why they were there and exactly what, what was going on right right yeah like, I don't know if that'd make it worse or if that'd make it better but it just seems like it'd be kind of interesting to have like more answers like I've never um obviously had something that traumatic but from what I have learned um uh Gavin DeBecker who's I talk about all the time on this podcast the book The Gift of Fear uh, which is, I, I don't know if you should read it or not. Have you read it? <laughs> no. Why? I don't know if you should. I mean, it's all about this. It's about sort of like, you know, how women have developed a sixth sense and how we can sort of like, you know, feel if we're in danger and how we need to honor that intuition and, you know, how we um, sort of doubt ourselves and, and demean our own gut instinct mm -hmm. now because we've been told for so long that we're crazy and that we need to calm down and that we're psycho and we're emotional and we're dramatic and we're sensitive and whatever. And that we have the sixth sense where we can go like, I have a weird feeling about that person, you know, when you're in public or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like you just automatically know a lot of the time. You just know. And it's like, there's no reason for it. I can't articulate why necessarily, but I'm telling you, you have a weird feeling about it. And that celebrities in particular, and by celebrity, I don't just mean actresses, like anyone who has any kind of power, you know, you can be a celebrity in your local town because you own the bread shop, you know, like anyone that has like attention coming at the, a bread shop. That's a thing some places. That's like a rom-com right That's a there. That's <laughs> Where's that bread yeah, shop like, guy? What lifetime movie is that? <laughs> I know, she Cute. dropped her French bread. In romantic comedies, there's always like one long French bread coming out of the groceries that's like totally. not, not yeah, wrapped for some reason. I'm always like, Looking what? real fresh. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't France in the French. 20s. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like obsessed just as like in making television. I'm obsessed with the prop guy that was like, here's the bread. Like they just put that, there's this one loaf of bread that's been in every movie. It's been in the more The most famous loaf the of bread. <laughs> More time. than any actor on the planet. 
and um and basically how you know we develop this sixth sense and and, and we doubt it you know um and just like the, it's called the gift of fear and about how important fear is oh, okay and there's all these incredible stories and by incredible i mean like horrifying of women that have been stalked and stuff and um who is the woman sorry i don't want to traumatize you further is this <laughs> I making it worse oh my god this. i already ruined I like your memory with your grandmother like it's okay this is a nightmare, <laughs> but it's a lot about the psychology of, of stalkers and the, the psychology of obsession. I actually love that kind of stuff. Like, I'm really interested in, like, I love watching, like, shows about murders and, like, how they happened and all that. Yeah, and a lot of it, in, a lot of that fascination is our brain when we're scared uh, preparing and studying and doing recon and research, basically, which is the same reason we have nightmares. Like, people, there's a war on nightmares, uh, and I will not have it. Nightmares are good. So are you going to be able to live alone at some point, you think? Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I have a, another place, and I do stay there sometimes and stuff but like we need um, to get you some dogs we need to get you some big dogs <laughs> yeah that'd be good they say the best security system in the world is dogs they say that the bark is all that matters too that's right heard that. like, that's right you yeah have, like if the that's dog it. has a really good bark yes I have a small the bite dog. helps too that's true but my dog has like this really like great bark even though she weighs like 14 pounds <laughs> but now i just gave it away so i should yeah, <laughs> yeah. i should get a really big yeah dog. we need to get you like like a serious dog all my friends were like making fun of me saying like, you got to move out. Like, come on. Like, because it was funny because when the thing happened with the guy at my house, like it was raining that night. So I went back to my parents' house. Like uh -huh. I didn't even go home to my house. I love that this guy and is so dumb. He set himself on fire. The one day it rains in L.A. <laughs> I know. The one day you can't catch a good fire. How does a person shoot themselves and set themselves? Like, how do they even do that? Like, so they haven't even both? like done the forensics on how he did it? Well, they figured out who this he was. This is a man who's good at multitasking. <laughs> and then it was crazy, too. They found like his car like a few blocks away and there was like blood and like hair in the trunk and they were like oh he's probably a serial killer but they never figured out exactly like like the story and he was like taking trips like, do we not pay year. enough taxes in california <laughs> why have they not dug deeper into this investigation I, I think they tried like they tried to dig really deep they even went they went to where he lived and like he only had a mattress and like white walls and they and nothing on his computer and they they couldn't like figure out anything how old was he maybe like late 30s wow yeah, but he took care of the problem. So, <laughs> doesn't it seem fun though to try to like maybe not fun, but like interesting to like try to figure? Yes, I love the psychology of stuff like this. Like but, what was going on? But I have, are, like, bits and pieces. But are you? Have you like built a sort of like exoskeleton of armor, or have you cried about this? No, I didn't cry or anything. But I just it's because I. When wasn't are you going to cry about this? <laughs> Should I cry right At now? At what point <laughs> should, should I get we? Out my yeah, yeah, should we? <laughs> 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 you dried up that menthol stick. <laughs> I mean, it, this is traumatizing. Are you like, is there like denial? Denial's good. I don't want to take your <laughs> denial from you. It's a very helpful tool. I mean, I just think because I wasn't actually there that night, it helped a lot because it's like, if I didn't actually experience, like, I almost feel worse for the person who is like, I do feel worse for the, the person woman who, in the car. I mean, that must've been horrible. I never like met her or spoke with her, but that was probably really scary. Like, could you imagine being in a car and like all of a sudden someone's like shooting at your car? Unless she was stalking you also. <laughs> While she was driving she by to stalk you, <laughs> your other stalker shot your other stalker. They're competing over your your burying in your backyard. But you really do tell this story so like nonchalantly. You're just like he was burying things in my backyard. There was blood in here in the car. The milk chocolate part weirds me out. Like, that, by the way, that that's like, my fa I'm just trying to like the horizon milk figure chocolate. you out. And your the biggest detail that you have emphasized was there was milk chocolate. You're like I'm a dark chocolate person. <laughs> Mil who eats milk, milk chocolate? chocolate? Ew, that's the thing that is the most offensive to you about this whole story i mean it's weird though like all the other things add up like rope and knives and things but like no milk milk chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> killing people is a lot of work you just snack <laughs> when you have a little treat before he murdered you yeah like what is that about so that house are you gonna sell Probably, yeah. For a long time, though, I kept it because I kept thinking, like, oh, like, I'll get over it and I'll probably go stay there. But to be honest, even before that happened, it's, like, a very creaky house. Like, in yeah. the middle of the night, like, you hear sounds and it seems like, like people are in the house because it's an older home. Uh-huh. So I think I was already, like, not going to have the nerve to live yeah. there even before that happened. So I'm probably going to, like, move on and just live. So you own two homes. I'm putting that in the Tinder bio. <laughs> I own two homes. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, own two homes, dodged death. <laughs> dodged death. Dodged death. And what was the On other a rainy one? rainy LA night, I dodged death. <laughs> um, no zebra pants, please. <laughs> no zebra pants with a chain. So what do you want? Like, I look at someone like you and I'm just like, amazing family, amazing life. I have this theory 
this is a hot take, that the fact that you had such a traumatic, horrible thing happen to you, what are the chances that would happen again? That's true. That's the thing I said about that, the house. The shoe Nothing dropped. Bad, the like, shoe dropped. going to happen at When that something house. horrible happens to me, I get so excited because I'm like, it happened. Woo. I lived and it's yes. not going to happen again. <laughs> my uncle was really disturbed because when my dad died, I was like, whoo, okay. That means my mom's not going to die for a while. And he was like, what? And I was like, it's just, there's no way. What are the chances? That's just like too bad of luck. Yes, there's like a little bit of a relief that, um, uh, sort of envelops me when something really horrible happens because it makes me think I have a couple years of like serenity ahead of me. Yeah, because you sort of know like something's bound to happen eventually. Yeah. And then you get your break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like now you, so no one's going to try to kill you for at least another couple That's years. A good place to be in. That, it happened like a few years ago so it might be coming up to like Yeah, I was going to say actually <laughs> <laughs> it might not be good for me. So what